Hi, welcome to Drinking From The Firehose. I'm Roger Wilcox, and I'm gonna be co-hosting this series of 10-minute videos that are aimed at equipping managers to improve their own performance and their team's performance. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on team vision and how to give a clear sense of direction. I'm gonna be co-hosting it with Murray, who you'll see in a minute. So what, what's the goal? Why is it important to have a clear vision? Well, our goal is to actually connect everyone to have everybody connected to a picture of the future that you desire. So having a vision is really important. It's about getting to that place where everybody has a shared understanding of where you're going to. And what that enables is individuals to see how they contribute to the bigger picture. So that's our goal. Now, why is that important? Well, a powerful vision inspires people. If you have a mental image of what it's like where you're trying to get to, it really inspires you to do great work. It inspires your, your teams to give discretionary effort and it enthuses them. And also people can see how they can make a difference. It ignites our passions. So rather than just thinking, I've got a goal to achieve this objective, this objective, if you have something like a lot of pe people have been talking about this net zero, it, it ignites people, it, it, uh, it, it ignites their passions for doing something, it motivates them. And even in the midst of setbacks, we can actually build on it, get over those, uh, setbacks and move on to the better place. So it's really motivating. Now over to Murray at this point. Hey Roger, thanks for that. Uh, I'm actually going to start off with uh, an example uh, that I've heard many times over the years. I'm not 100% sure if it's true or not, but it's a fabulous example. Uh, and it goes back to uh, NASA during their preparation for the uh, Apollo uh, space missions. And there's a story goes that JFK was visiting Houston uh, in this lead up to this. And he came across, on one of his visits, he came across a janitor, uh, you know, just in the open area with his mop or his brush. And he asked this guy, you know, what's, what's your role here? Uh, and he was blown away with the response because the janitor's response was, I'm here to put a man on the moon. And I've always found that such an inspiring story. Uh, again, whether it's true or not, it's a really inspiring story. And I think that's key, you know, regardless of your role within a team or within an organization, you're not just the janitor, you're a key part uh, in putting a man on the moon or whatever the vision may be. And I like that, and I think that's a real key part for any vision, uh, as you're saying, you know, that pictorial uh, version of, of where you're trying to get to. I think it's important that people understand where they fit into that and hopefully see themselves as a valuable part of driving everybody forward, uh, regardless of what their role is, but they're still a valuable part to drive that forward. So I think, you know, that, that helps identify, so unify individuals and under, really understand what their role is and it potentially breaks down the silos. You're, you're not just a small part of the team. You're a you know, significant and key part of a wider team yeah. uh, striving to that goal. And again, it hopefully helps overall sort of land what your, both your short and your long-term goals are. Because I guess reality is some of these visions, a bit like the Apollo mission, takes a long time to get there but there's probably a lot of short term uh, goals and achievements in there that again, if you've got the focus, you can drive towards that. Uh, so I guess next part for me is possibly the current performance. Uh, and this again is something we've seen, I'm sure you're the same Roger around many organizations. Part of it is how visible is that vision? Well, actually, do you have one? <laughs> and if so, how visible is it? Uh, and how up to date is it? I've been in many, many places where there's a sort of faded old version of a vision up on a wall that obviously is quite hard to buy into because it's five or six years old. So I guess that's a real sort of key check for anybody is, do we have a vision? Uh, is it visible? Does everybody you know, see it and understand it? Uh, and is it up to date? Is it still relevant? Uh, and I would guess in the, the times we're all going through just now, that may have changed significantly to what your vision was 12 months ago. So. Is it still relevant? Are people still bought into it? And I guess one of the checks in there, if you're talking to other members of your team, can they articulate it? Can they actually describe the vision and explain to you what it is? It's a good check to see, do they know about it? Are they bought into it? Are they committed to it? A very, very simple thing to do, um, but you know, it's still a valuable exercise. You can they articulate it? Is it around the place? Is it up in people's walls? Uh, and again, even just now, as many people are working from home, do they have a version of it uh, yeah. in their little home office? Uh, you know, it's just another good check. And I guess 
So the final part for me before I hand back to you, Roger, is do some of these, does it tie into what they're doing daily and weekly? Does it tie into their daily activities? Uh, I've worked with a, a few great organisations over the years where it was always a good checkpoint from, from a leader. You know, we're coming up with plans to move forward or some activities we were doing. And it was a good check of, does this link into what our, our vision is and does it actually move us closer to that? So back over to you, Roger. Thanks, Murray. The key question I have as well is how to achieve that goal. And it's, it's really interesting. I think there's a, a really good way of doing it. The best visions I've seen are very visual. It's something that a manager can own with his team, that everybody understands their part in it. They've helped contribute to make the vision, but it's not as simple as just one, one sentence. It's actually a pictorial representation. And they often say a picture is worth a thousand words. And so what I like to see is a picture. And I've done this with teams in a number of ways, actually get them create their own pictures. Sometimes you have great artists in teams who can take that and turn it into a beautiful picture. But even if you've got stick men, if you understand what it means and your team understands, that's what you're trying to get. So, for example, in one team I worked with, um, they had barriers between their team and another one. And so somebody had drawn a simple sketch where they actually drew a fence and one team on the other side and another team on the other. And they said, look, that's not what we want to be about. We want to be unified. We want to be working together. And so somebody had drawn um, hammers and it was almost like breaking down the Berlin Wall and you can start to picture, okay, that's what, what it is. That's part of their vision. But it really enabled the team to talk about, well, that's what they're trying to achieve. How do we break down the barriers? What specifically do they do to break down the barriers? What are there, what, you know, and then you can turn it into objectives. What's the objective? How do we move that forward? And so that team, they worked hard. They brought in the other team into the vision picture as well. So they were unified on that. They all agreed it was the right thing to do. And to be honest, it was about sharing what they were doing with the other team so that they understood what it was. They actually, um, some people came from one area of a, a plant to come and speak with other people and see what they did. And it was incredible how they did break through those barriers. So what I'd say is on your vision, what you need to do is identify what you want to leave behind. What are the kind of bad behaviors, the bad things that you're currently doing that you want to leave behind? What do you want to retain and what do you want to add in the future? So another one relating to behaviors, um, one team picture I saw, um, they, they had people who they said had negative attitudes that they wanted to change and they wanted to call them out on it. But beforehand, it was very uh, hidden. People didn't want to call each other out on it. So on the vision, somebody had been brave enough to say, well, what we want is, and they'd drawn a smiley face uh, with a big smile. And on that, they had a plus on the forehead, uh, positive attitude. And then they also had uh, a frowny face with a big negative, a negative attitude. And they put uh, across through the negative attitude, one a big tick around the, the positive attitude. And so when people were articulating that, they were able to say, well, look, we, we want to focus on positive attitudes and eliminate the negative attitudes. And what that enabled, again, when people came to their day-to-day -day work, they were able to call out and say, hey, you're like that frowny guy, uh, leave that alone. And it was a fun thing, but it actually started to change the behaviors and actually resulted in them having a much more positive way of working. So I'd say identify those, what to leave behind, keep and add. I think be positive, specific and ambitious. So other areas where I've seen good visions, they've actually had a, a target. So on one I saw a good, it was a mountain, a picture of a mountain. And at the top was 100,000 barrels. And that was how much oil they wanted to produce in 100,000 barrels per day on, on their platform. And so that was a really good example. And they all aspired to that. They, they, they worked very hard then to diligently set up plans on how to get to that. I think another important aspect of a vision is that it comes from the heart and not just the head. It's not about um, specific targets, but it is about being ambitious and identifying what's important. So over to Murray, any thoughts on how to achieve the goal of getting that, uh, that vision? Yeah, absolutely. I think just adding to some of that, Roger, that the, the coming from the heart, I think, is so key. I've always been amazed that people sometimes have some real sort of hidden drivers that you're not aware of in the team. So, for example, if there's environmental impact of what you're trying to build into your vision, you may find that people are actually very passionate about the environment or very passionate about safety or some other aspect of it. And I guess it gives them a chance to add into the vision something that, that yeah, they are passionate about. It comes from their heart. And I guess it comes from there, 
you're going to be easier to engage and chances are you're going to work far harder to, uh, towards that goal, towards that target. Um, so it's a, I guess it's another good way to help people articulate that and show uh, so where they're coming from. I guess that also drives the part that it should be a shared vision, uh, which sounds kind of obvious, um, but there's always a risk it's maybe a, a vision of one person or a few people. I think as you've been articulating there, again, everybody is part of that and everybody has a say in it is really, really key. So it is a shared vision and they all have a genuine part to play in it, uh, which will then help people talk about it, share it, share it with people beyond the team. Uh, and I guess the more you talk about it and the more you share it, the more it actually becomes real for you, it becomes a, like a real genuine thing that you're driving towards. It's not just a picture. It's actually it's a real thing that we're, we're delivering. Uh, and just one final part I think to add into there is, as you were saying about these, like your happy face and smiley face on the picture, I've come across a concept a few times of above the line and below the line conversations. And I think there's a reality and it fits in really nicely to this, that as much as possible, you want an above the line conversation, so a positive, constructive conversation. And that's not always the way. There's plenty of people, and I've worked with many over the years, and I've probably been one over myself, where you've got below the line, slightly grumpy, moaning uh, conversations. And there's a bit of a realization in this concept that actually sometimes that's all right. So to dip below the line momentarily is okay, because you just want to get that off your chest. You want to share a frustration or a, an issue. But to drive forwards toward the vision, you want to come back above the line again. And it's a good check. It's a bit like your smiley face in there of just as much as possible as we're driving to that vision, it's the positive above the line conversation, uh, so, which is much more constructive and hopefully a little bit more embracing with the, with the rest of the team. Yeah. Thanks, Murray. And it's really interesting because what, what you've said there is it, it, it absolutely resounds with me. One of the things I think is actually getting it visual. So as we talked about the, the above the line, below the line, if you can start to, to pictorialize that so that your team then start to talk about that together. Um, I think, you know, if we could move on to the things we'd observe, um, if you get this right and you're actually sustaining it, that in, you'll actually see your team have a picture that people talk to, that people refer to, that they know they have a mental picture of it that they, they, they refer to regularly. Um, people gather around that vision, people talking about it at regular times. So I think it's gonna be really important. And you also hear people talking about how the things that they do relate to that vision. So that's back to that JFK story that uh, Murray told at the start. But I think what you'll also hear is people regularly talking and sharing about the vision. And I know Murray, you've got a really good uh, story from um, a, a, a chef who was doing some work. Do you want to just tell us that story about the chef and, and particularly about how he um, felt that contributed towards that vision? Yeah, thanks, Roger. I think it's one I've, I've uh, shared in the past, uh, so apologies if you've heard it already. But it was actually from uh, an offshore platform, and it was one we were we had a vision of dramatically improving our water injection performance. So there was a real shared goal there, a real shared driver to... Essentially, this platform was on plateau, so steady production. Uh, there was a chance it was going to start to come off naturally, so start to uh, decline. And there was a challenge from senior leadership to extend that plateau period as long as we could. So we had a vision of how to do that. And one of the key things was a bit like the JFK story. It needed everybody completely bought into this vision of extending plateau as long as we could. Uh, and it was massively successful. And in some of the points that we've, we've raised before, you know, it was very visual. It was spoken about everybody in the team onshore and offshore knew the vision, knew that, that all the activities were striving towards this. And it was extremely powerful. And we actually, we achieved it. We got, we extended Plateau for about another three or four months, a huge additional value to the organization. So huge success. But a big lesson we had in there is we, we came off that and then started to move on to the next vision. So what's the next thing we have to deliver? We stopped talking about it quite so much. Uh, and the field manager was offshore in the platform doing one of his regular visits. And he was challenged by a guy about why we weren't talking about this and why we weren't pushing it quite so hard. And this guy was a chef. And it was a real eyes, a real sort of learning moment for all of us that this, almost like the janitor, you, know, you could almost suggest the chef was slightly further down the, the chain in, in driving this performance, but he was so bought into what we were collectively, what we were all doing. He was such a strong advocate for it. 
it was talked about in the galley, it was talked about, you know, at meal times. And he had completely bought an input into that. And it's such a powerful thing. And I guess it's just a good reminder that it should be everybody around you, regardless of their their actual role. But if they feel part of it, you, it's hard to understand just what little uh, sort of additional benefits they will drive into the overall goal. In this guy's case, making sure everybody was you know motivated and well-fed and happy actually was really important. Yeah. Uh, but he was aware of it. He could articulate it. He could uh, share it with other people. New onto the platform as well. Here's what this is all about. Uh, it was a real key thing. Yeah, I really like that story about the, the chef. And the interesting thing for me is also what the manager's role was in that because the manager had been sharing um, the vision with the team. They'd been sharing it with lots of other people. When new people came to them, to this installation, they were sharing that vision. So it's really important to share. And also, as you say, for other people to be involved in that. I think um, one of the things that you'll hear people doing is actually calling people out when they are or aren't doing things aligned with the vision. So whether it's behavioral, whether it's about doing things that aren't moving things forward towards that vision, that comes to the fore. As a leader or a manager, one of the things that having a distinct vision for your team does, it really gives you confidence. It helps you understand that your team are moving towards a common goal. It's something that they uh, will be enthused about. And it's something that you can start to bring other teams in as well. So it's a really powerful thing for a manager to have that vision. So Murray, over to some activations. Yeah, Roger, I tell you just before we go to activation, just adding on to that, a couple of little uh, reminders, again, going back to that offshore story. You raised a really key point because this just didn't happen on its own and it didn't happen overnight. It took, as you say from the leader, it took a lot of repeats, a lot of driving that vision. And one of the most powerful things you would see onshore in the offices, and it's actually one of the very first things you saw offshore. So when you got your briefing, when you arrived offshore, it was there on the wall. It was spoken about by the OIM. It was spoken about by other leaders in the departments. So. I guess that was a key thing as well, is just actually having a vision and having a picture isn't the end of the story. You've got to keep articulating it, keep sharing it. And this was shared with every single person that arrived at this platform. Uh, and to be honest, whether or not they had any part to play in the overall vision, it's, at least they were still aware of what was happening. And that also drove another point you made there is it helped sometimes a little bit of a debate around our, the activities we're talking about just now, is that moving us towards this vision or is it going to impact it in, in some other way, some negative way? Uh, and it was just a good reminder that, you know, we've got this clear vision. Is it helping us get there? Or is this something perhaps we could just uh, sideline for a little while until we get ourselves to the vision and then we'll maybe come and revisit it. Um, so I yeah, it's, I think it's an all encompassing thing. It spreads right across the organization and across so many activities. Um, so yeah, sorry, just wanted to add a couple of things in there. Um, yeah, on the activation, I think it's like many other things we've spoken about. I think it's one of these th key things, you've just got to get, get on with it and do it. Um, but I guess one of the key starting points is probably you ought to have some sort of vision at the moment. So I guess one of the key things would be go and test that uh, understanding with your team. Go and ask them, what is the vision? Uh, where do you fit into it? Where where can I go and see it? Uh, where where is it? You know, up on a wall or whatever. Uh, chances are, it's maybe not quite as powerful or as visual as you think it, it is, which is you know in some ways great. It's a great opportunity uh, to make it better. So part of that activation, you know, once you've done that, it's almost like the go see and assess. Go see, you know, do we have a vision? Uh, is it still relevant? Is it uh, is it powerful? Are people bought into it? Uh, and yeah, maybe, maybe it needs updated. So maybe the first part of the activation is, do I need to do something about that? I, I think that's great, Murray. And I think the other thing that you can actually do as well is review your goals. So look at your current goals at the moment. How aligned are they with your vision? Is your short-term goals, your long-term goals actually going to deliver that vision or not? And if so, what changes are you going to make? So what I'd say to you is um, really... Just go do it. <laughs> Why don't you go do it? And what we'd love to see is if you could upload some examples of your visions onto the, the, uh, the comments, that'd be really good. Um, it would help inspire other people who haven't got those visions yet. So that's our, our charge to you. Just go do it. Yeah, and I guess like uh, all the other sessions we've done, Roger, it's one of these things, we're here to help. 
Uh, so if you, you go try and do that and you're struggling with any of it, get in touch, give us a shout. We've possibly got some pointers and some uh, bits of advice we can offer. Uh, and as you say, yeah, we'd love to see what you come up with. Uh, just one final point, and that's a visual aspect of it. I've always been amazed, because I am not artistic at all, but I've always been amazed that there's typically somebody in the team that is, uh, that can possibly just scribble out a half decent uh, visual for you. Uh, and if you're completely stuck, if you've got a whole team of Murrays that are just not artistic whatsoever, uh, we, we've got people that can do that. So it's actually quite an easy thing to pull together uh, a fairly decent uh, cartoon or, or graphic uh, visual. Uh, but as you say, Roger, yeah, I think the key thing, like like everything we're, we're, we're talking about in this series, is go, go and do it, go and try it. Uh, and yeah, I think just reinforce first point is go and see what you have just now. Do you have it? Is it up to date? Is it relevant? If not, here's a perfect opportunity to go and uh, move forward. So as always, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing your feedback and uh, see you on the next session.